come to Belize in Central America, an ex-British colony. It's only a small country, but it plays a significant part in the international multi-billion dollar business of cocaine smuggling. 37% of all the cocaine smuggled into the United States of America comes through Belize. Its geographical position, its hundreds of miles of unpatrolled coastline and unguarded land borders makes this tiny country a perfect haven for drug traffickers. The global cocaine trade is worth $23 billion a year. Belize has become an essential part of the narcotics highway, from production in South America to consumption in North America. Belize's white sandy beaches and crystal clear waters attracts tourists from all over the world. But it's its labyrinth of mangroves and hundreds of islands that also attracts the drug smugglers. And the majority of cocaine that arrives in Belize comes by sea. The Colombians use local gangs to get the cocaine through Belize to the Mexican cartels. The gangs are rewarded for its safe transportation with drugs, cash and military weapons. Consequently, this small city is swamped with guns and drugs and gangland murders are at a record level. City, home to some 3,000 gangsters. Last year, there were over 100 gang-related murders. The US State Department recently described the situation here as critical. And with a population of just 69,000, it's the sixth most likely place on the planet for someone to die from a gunshot wound. For the second time in a week, police have made a major weapon seizure. 13 handguns, 32 rifles, 37 shots, and 35 shots were fired. Most of the weapons were confiscated in Belize City. Belize is a city on the verge of anarchy. Attempting to keep a lid on the violence are the police. Working alongside them are the heavily armed Belize Defense Force. There are 23 gangs in this small city. Corporal Onsworth of the anti-gang unit has agreed to take me on a tour. It's causing problems, yeah? No, 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 no. You're less than 100 yards from the police station and you're already in a gang area. Yeah, it's our neighbour, next door neighbour. Kill bloods, fuck you all. Just over the weekend, we have about um, five separate shooting incidents. Just five over, shootings? Over this weekend, on this very street. So you look at the houses, they're mainly made out of wood. If a round hit one of those, it'd go straight through. Penetrate right through. It goes on and hit whatever is inside. So kids? Kids. Civilians? Civilians, innocent people. Well, this is one of the real active neighborhoods involving a lot of shooting. What kind of guns are these people using then? Um, AK-47s, AR-15s, M16, 9mm, explosives. We have 12 persons that was injured, one was killed by a hand grenade that was thrown through the neighborhood. Grenade. Yes. There was a grenade blast in the city last night. The deadly explosive device was used in a gang-related attack on a group of young men in the Mayflower Street area. One 16-year-old is dead, another young man is critical, and 10 others, including a woman, were injured. It is a crime that has stunned the city. That's the grenade went off. Yeah, right here. He was standing somewhere over here. There's a guy who rode up on a bicycle from over there mm -hmm. and threw the grenade from there. It bounced on one of these wires and it dropped, and he kicked it. And as he kicked it, the grenade Went off. Went off, yeah. So he, so he tried to get he tried to kick it away. Kick it away. He didn't know it was a grenade. In history it was the first time that 
and explosives ever, ever was shown in a neighborhood that is so populated. And if you can see, the majority is Children. small kids. And was there any retaliation? They know what neighborhood that the grenade. Yes, they did. They, did. they knew who first. They knew. They knew. They knew. I mean, these are incredibly poor areas, aren't they? Yeah. Very poor. Is there any kind of social welfare here for these people? Nope. Nothing at all. Well, How do they put food in their stomachs, then? Selling marijuana, selling crack cocaine. Right. These guys are selling crack cocaine. So these boys here, yeah? Yeah. These guys, they call themselves a dog punk. They used to be one dog most punk. notorious. Instead of using weapons, they used to bite you. They'd bite you in the throat, bite off your ears, bite you like dogs. They bite you in the bite, throat, rip bite your throat. Your throat. Bite off a ear. Bite off your. You know, bite off piece of your face. Jaw, yeah. So we've just travelled 40 metres, maybe under that, and you've managed to point out four different murders that have occurred in the last two years. It was just for this year. That's this year. This year. It doesn't seem to be any area that hasn't got a gang. That's true. That's the harsh reality behind it. I've never been to anywhere like that. I'm in Belize, Central America. Over a third of the cocaine that's smuggled from Colombia into the USA passes through this small country. For the South American drug cartels, Belize is a refueling stop between South and North America. The local gangs that escort the drugs through Belize are paid with weapons and drugs. The boats used to traffic the cocaine only represent a small fraction of their valuable cargo. And once their job is done, they're abandoned. Two years ago, with the help of American money, Belize got its first Coast Guard. However, despite that investment, most of its fleet are supplied by the Colombians. Commander Borland? Ross Kent, pleased to meet you. Good to meet you, sir. This is uh, one of the boats that was confiscated off the Colombians, isn't it? That's correct. So, Commander, just how effective are these boats? These boats are awesome. They give us very, very good performance. I mean, they came from a thousand miles away, you know. And how long would that take them in one run? It takes uh, 48 to 72 hours. If the Mexican border isn't that much further north, why do traffickers come into Belize? In, in the years gone by, we were so um, under-resourced with assets to police or yeah. overseas. Um, the Mexicans are right up there with a lot more resources than we have. One of the sayings that we've heard is that there's a thing called the sea lotto. It's, it's a result of what the locals find floating after a, 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 a delivery has been made and some stuff get le gets left over. The only problem they have is getting rid of it afterwards. A lot of them get killed if they try and sell it on to the gangsters, don't they? Well, that's what happens, you know, and that's what affects us back home. It's, it's, it's the stuff that gets left over and gets into the society and community and fuel the, the, the gang wars and, you know, the drug problem that we have here. But it's not just boats that the drug runners leave behind. So this aircraft landed on the Northern Highway about uh, two and a half months ago. They've actually sealed off a public road and used it as a landing strip. They got their own security out there. They cordoned off a part of the highway that was long enough and wide enough for this aircraft to land. There's bullet holes in the, uh, in the windscreen up there. Well. When the security forces arrived on the scene, they came in the fire and they returned fire. Actually, somebody got shot because there were uh, traces of blood left in the cockpit. How much cocaine could be actually uh, transported in, in a plane like this? Uh, this aircraft would take uh, a ton of cocaine uh, quite easily. $50 million worth? Yeah, that's, that's what it is. The plane's worth what? I don't know. The aircraft's not worth more than a million dollars. million dollars, so it's actually an acceptable loss again. That's, that's what it is. National Coast Guard, we're heading down the Belize River. About four or five miles time, we'll get into open ocean, and then we'll head north, and they'll start boarding fishing vessels searching for cocaine. Yeah. 
well, just stop this fishing vessel now. I'm not necessarily looking for cocaine, but you know, this boat has to have documents to say, hey, it's seaworthy. And obviously, ultimately, if people started throwing white packets over the boat when we first sighted it, they would have opened fire on it. But... These aren't the people that you'd normally expect to be trafficking thousands of kilos of cocaine. Yeah, that's right. Um, these aren't the drug runners from South America. Yeah. Um, however, they could support the drug trade uh, by providing fuel containers to them, yeah. um, local knowledge to them, and yeah. any, any other information that they may require. I.e. where the reefs are, fuel, and also like knowledge about where you guys are, for yeah. instance. The Belize Coast Guard have eight boats to create a deterrent, but with 14,000 square kilometers of ocean to cover, it's impossible to prevent drug traffickers from coming in by sea. Right, we've just spotted a boat off the starboard, yeah? And uh, they're trying to catch up with it. We're going at a hell of a rate now, as you can see by the way I'm bouncing around. Um, but it's quite an exciting game, this. I mean, they spot boats, they try and cut them off, and the other boats try to outrun them. that we've been chasing is heading into an island just to the front of us and it's slowed down considerably. The boat that we were chasing earlier um, has actually arrived in what can only be described as paradise. Um, it is actually registered to the British Army. They know that actual speedboat. The British Army still use Belize for training and we've inadvertently ended up at one of their bases. Being on patrol with the Coast Guard has been exciting, but ultimately inconclusive. If I want to discover more about the gangs here, I have to head back onto the streets of Belize City. Our research has uncovered a character called Cobra, a veteran gangster and someone who has had direct contact with the Colombian drug traffickers. So how dangerous is it, mate, living here where we are now? Well, we have a lot of big guns in Belize. I've been shot by an AK. Where'd know? they get you? They caught me right here in my shoulder, you know, this oh, one I can right see here. It. Yeah, yeah, right there, you yeah. Know, I, get, I get caught here. Where were you actually when, the, when you got shot then? I was trying to rob cocaine. I was trying to drop, you know, drop drugs, drop cocaine. You know, I, I went one day to San Pedro because the guys, they came in, the Colombian guys, they came across the San Colombians Pedro. Colombians were coming yeah. in with, with drugs, Yes, yeah? and they wanted fuel for order to get to Mexico, so they offered us drugs for fuel. You were hitting these Colombian guys and they came in in their boats. How much were you really making? Well, I wasn't working with them. I just went to do a fuel run for them. They wanted fuel, but we don't want to give them fuel. We wanted their drugs. We wanted money. Well, how much would they offer you in terms of payment? Like two kilos for maybe two, two jumps of fuel, you know? Two kilos? Yeah. For just two jumps of fuel. That's a lot of, that's yeah, a lot of cocaine. Because yeah, yeah. they have tons, they have tons of cocaine. You know, there are big boats with a lot of drugs, you know. I see all of that, man. I want it all, but I just got seven kilos, just, you know. What happened to those guys? They ended up running. I shot one of them in the belly. All right. Cobra belongs to a gang called Posse in the Village, or PIV for short. But its street acronym is Professionals in Violence. The Belize gangs were originally affiliated to the Bloods and Crips. But since the introduction of huge amounts of cocaine, the dollar has more clout than any color. And now every gang is a potential enemy. The spot where PIV hang out is on the border of their territory and has one of the highest murder rates in the city. That's the south side right there. The Crips say, for instance, know that you're here. So it's a dangerous place to stand, isn't it? In the night, in this night, it gets kind of dangerous. When they, they can't do what they want. It's too many faces seeing what they're doing, you know? One day that guy stabbed me down, man, in my back with a screwdriver. That same guy right there in the red. Which one? That same guy in the red right there. He got yeah, a beef yeah. with me, he stabbed me in the back with a fucking um, screwdriver. Yeah. You don't want to come. Come over here, man. Come over here, don't be doing that. Come over here. I want you to tell him about the old beef that me and you have when you stab me down with the, with the, with the screwdriver. I want him to talk about when they kick your teeth out, too. Because <laughs> he stabbed me and I never run. I end up getting it and stab him up like about three times. And we're still alive to talk about it. We're still friends. Even though you try to kill each other, you know, yeah. good friends, yeah? Yep. 
Hey, go by the flip. Get down here then. He said, next time he's not going to stab me in my back, he's going to stab me in my choke. He's just talking, man, that guy. He likes to talk a lot. We don't deal with talking around here, you know. The fact that yards, sometimes inches, separate opposing gangs means that violence and murder are commonplace. Eggy, tell him why you lose your job, man. You know why you lose your job? Tell him why you lose your job. Tell him why you lose your job. Because he was a dirty cop. He, he, he take away cocaine from, from guys, from bad guys like us, take away drugs, and he end up taking it for himself and selling it to, to the streets, to the street guys. We call him Eggy. You know, Eggy is a dirty cop. Well, tell, tell us. Tell him about the story of being a cop and a dirty fucking cop. That's what you should tell him. Why did you leave the police force? Sir? Why did I leave the police force? You can't answer the question. Why did you leave the police force? Eggy's clearly unwilling to incriminate himself on camera. Cobra has the scars to back up his stories, but I have no way of knowing if his accusations are true or false. Belize City is a dangerous, weird, and unnerving place. With gang membership five times greater per person than that of LA, we have no trouble finding the gangs here. Well, while we've been here, we've seen lots of gangsters with guns, high-powered weapons, one of the gangs has told us to follow them. I have no idea where we're going. And we're going to have to turn the camera off before we get there. And they've promised to show us some of the serious hardware that's on the streets and some of the stuff that they use here in Belize City. I have no idea where I actually have been taken, and I can't tell you who's given this to me, but this is an example of the hardware that's on the streets of Belize. This is a NATO hand grenade, very similar probably to the one that was used lately in Belize. That will kill a lot of people, um, particularly if it's thrown into a crowd against the wall. The pellets ricochet off, it will maim, it will kill. In all my travels around the world, I have never seen a gang with this kind of hardware. I'm amazed at how acute the problem is here, how many gangs there are, and how close the enemy's territories are to each other. People are literally confined to the few streets of their gang's hood, and the price for slipping out of that neighborhood could be death. Many, many are a very short period of time. We've already met one gang. We've already gained access to another gang. Just goes to show how many active gangs there are here in Belize City. Uh, these lot are called the Dog Pound. Uh, they've agreed to talk to us. Dog Pound are aptly named because of their reputation for biting their enemies. You okay? This is me, man. Yes, man. Boys, have you lost man. a lot of boys? We lost 13 homeboys. Yeah. Yeah. Home sorry, one person, now. sorry, say that again. We lost 13 homeboys in less than two years. 13 boys dead? Yeah. All of them were from guns. And I ain't scared they kill one, I go take two. They kill two of mine, I go take three. Yeah. Yo, my life ain't a gun, but fuck. If you try to take me, I'll take you. If I was born on this block, and I'm dying on this block. Sorry. We made these. These Man. guns we made. Have a look. There's a pin on the inside there, yeah? Yeah, there's a pin on the inside. And you shove it up there. Force. What about the other gangs? They, they, got got they got They got automatic yeah. weapons. They got, yeah. they got mad guns. We don't waste bullets, we don't come and boom, see boom, them, boom, 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 boom. We meet them one one and we get rid of their fucking ass. Our bullets is one per each head. They come kill us, we go back and kill them back. If you disrespect my hood, violate my block, I'm coming for your bitch ass. Right away. I've seen niggas spread across their cars with gunshots in the head. Hey, All I could do is man. cry, go to the cemetery or what? Dead already, man. Who's responsible for that? Jill Street gang. George Street. They George Street is the biggest gang, man. Fuck. My homeboy don't like them, man. I roll up you know, on them and I My homeboy cuts for me up, man, for my fucking rock, man. Yeah. Nigga and like we. Forgive, we forgive, but we don't forget. We and if I right. forget you today, remember, I will remember you four years from now. And if I meet you with my gun in my hand, you's a dead motherfucker. You is your bitch that you with. 
Mm. You're dead. I ain't giving a fuck. Do you not worry that because of what you do that you could you could be killed? God created me to live. I'm gonna live and to tell you the truth, all the all the other youths in the world, I wouldn't want them to come like this. I know the way the world is running and I know how we are going in my country, but come on man. We can't get no sensible jobs or minimum wage is a little bit of fucking money. How the fuck can we live? I, as a getter, you right now would want to get out of this game. Mm. But I can't. Who will I turn to? My daughter is three years old. My son is one year old. That's a responsibility, isn't it? I got to face that. Every day I come out, I think about my head getting shot open. I can't get out, man. This is my life. I was born here. I'm going to die here. I'm in Belize City, Central America, where the narcotics and guns smuggled through here by South American drug dealers have turned this small city into a battleground. I'm going back to see Corporal Longsworth to ask him about the link between the Colombian cartels, the Belize City gangs, and the amount of drugs that end up on the streets. Can you tell me when, like, crack cocaine started coming into Belize City? Sometime around the late 80s early 90s. So what do these gangs do when they're given two kilos of, of cocaine? What do they do with it? A kilo of cocaine in the Belize streets is an average of 10,000. But if you cooked it for a small distribution, there's where it doubles or triples. Yeah. Tons of cocaine pass through Belize every year. 7% of it stays behind, and the majority of that gets turned into crack. The major player goes and he has his lab where he cooks. They cooked it and distributed it to the gang members on the corners, and they sell it to the addicts. Now, these major players, are we talking these, the leader of the street gang, or are there bigger people involved? There are bigger people involved. And these are people who have connections with the cartels? With the cartels, and then they have connection with the gangs. He was the boss of the George Street crew and the powerful player in Belize's underworld. He was enlisted by a corrupt Belizean government official working with Mexico's Juarez cartel to smuggle 12 tons of cocaine into the United States, assisted by, quote, armed members of the George Street crew. He was a major, major player in the George Street. He would look right into our face and tell you he's untouchable. He told me that he's good for $30 million. We have $30 million in cash. Yes. The people making the real money from the drugs trade don't live in the same ghettos as the gangs. They live in the respectable parts of town and, for obvious reasons, are not keen to be filmed. Over the next few days, we managed to make contact with the leading figure of George Street, the most feared gang in Belize. Jason Brown has considerable clout on the streets and is rumoured to be behind countless contract killings. I've arranged to meet him at a remote location outside of the city. Jason? We've been told that there are these Mr Bigs that uh, pass the orders down to the gangs. Like me, I would be like their lieutenant. I get all the little soldiers that follow us to do the work. I'm going to get one salary, and all the guys that follow us, I got to take care of them. This is going to be my responsibility. I'm going to be driving past in my car tilted. You won't see me, but I see you. And I have the gunmen already waiting, you know. And I just give the call, move now. And within 15 minutes, they would be right up your ass, and you would be dead. Because if you take a blood for them, they, they want it back by tomorrow, man. And they're going to get it. And they have the potential to do it. Why has is, why is George Street got such a reputation, then? We have witnesses who will be killed. If you're a witness, you say, I could come 12 o'clock in the afternoon and shot this guy in the middle of his forehead, and you're a witness. I'm not saying anything. You better not. You better not. Because if you do it, you, your family, and whosoever follows. Jason is a target himself, 
and has had countless attempts made on his life. The only thing I could have do was grab his gun. If I would have just stand there, he'd have hit me in the face. I made a couple of steps and I snatched the gun and by the time I had my hand on the gun... He pulled the trigger. He just got frightened and he pulled the fucking trigger. No plane. I'm surprised by Jason's honesty, and he openly admits to being responsible for some terrible and indiscriminate acts of violence that he says he now regrets. Twice, I heard a little kid. Twice, I heard little kids. You did that by the order? Yeah, the order that I gave. I heard some kids, man. It's like I tell them, go hit that spot. They go hit the spot. Fuck when they left the spot. Kid is shot. Innocent. Innocently. And all those things bother me, man. And I have my kids. Uh, I can ask God, where, where's my position in all this, you know? Mm. And I decide, like, fuck. I don't want this no more, man. No more, no more. Because every day it's killing me. Every day. It's a lose-lose situation for me. Because I'm losing my homies. And I could probably end up losing my family, which is the most valuable thing to me, you know? So I think the best way for me now is to do positive. If I die trying positive, I might feel a little bit better in my heart because then at least I was trying to change and trying to do good, you know? As a positive step, Jason is teaching woodwork to young people who might otherwise be recruited into the gangs. He says that he's out of the gang, but he also admits that you can never really be out of the gang. He says when he's here at, at this woodwork school, he feels a release, he feels safe, he feels free. He's free here, but as soon as he goes back to where he actually lives, it's like being incarcerated again. Anyway, he's agreed to take us there and to meet the meanest, nastiest gang in the whole of Belize City, and that's George Street. <laughs> It's beginning to get dark as we arrive in George Street. There are already a few gang members on the streets, and Jason introduces me to Baja, his cousin, and his most loyal soldier. All right, this is my little corner right here. My homies, you know. But I hang all the way up to that other lane down yonder, you know. We, yeah, we control this whole neighborhood. George Street, yeah? Yeah, no boy should play in this neighborhood. Someone, just say someone came along and shot a member of George Street now, you would retaliate straight away. We take on Goliath, we take him on. All crew, you know, trying to gang up Crips' bloods, everyone, we don't give a fuck. We kill Crip blood, anybody. And the person who I think will take my life, me and the police, you understand me? Because me already did time for a police murder remanded. So I may have just have to watch my back from these cops, afraid they pick me up late night and no one don't see. But you were saying, Badger, if it does kick off, you're going to go straight, get your vest on, yeah? Yeah, man, and I have to stay at my vest after that, you know, even if it's hot, even if I sweat, I'd rather sweat than feel lead. Rather sweat than feel lead? Yeah, man. I'm really shocked by their casual attitude towards violence here. In other places, you can feel that the people that you're with have an agenda, they are killers. But with these guys, these are probably the worst, some of the worst killers I've ever met. And they just don't feel like that when you're with them. And you know, in the blinking of an eye, though, they could switch. Start pulling triggers and throwing hand grenades. The next morning, Jason takes me to the other side of town to meet his family in a safe house. Sometimes innocents get shot in the shootouts here, don't they? Definitely. Kids get shot innocently. And it, it, it. The last time it was like probably about 10 year old. A 10 year old? 10 year old little boy. Get know? killed? Innocent. He didn't die. He got shot in the chest. <gasps> then the other guy, the 13 year old, he can't walk good. It's a bullet hole there. Eh? Yeah, we got a bullet hole right here. This was once when they came to kill me and some of my homies. You know? Really? Yeah. They came and bust about 15 shots. You've got kids in this house as well? Yeah, kids were in this house, definitely. They were lying on the bed. And that rounds them straight through? Straight through. The girl, when she came out and saw what happened, she, she, she cried. A couple months after someone died for the shit. Because you've got to keep her standard up. 
Jason still lives on George Street, but visits his three daughters as often as he can. But this is my little queen right here. <laughs> she always want to be with me, go with me everywhere I go. This is my big daughter. Big S, she's, she's at college right now. You know, I love her too. <laughs> and this is my medium daughter, she's 11. Hey, yeah. She's in school, primary school. They saw so many shit, man, I'm telling you. Really? They saw so many shits. One time I was with her, and a guy came with a big pump action. I tried to grab her, right, to let him not shoot me, you know? And I hold her, like, to say, fuck, he's not going to shoot me because I have my daughter. Uh -huh. You know this asshole be pulling the trigger still? My daughter just bolt out my hands and ran up the street. Do you remember that happening? Do you remember when the angel coined the big gun? She remembers it's not long ago. You know, like one time when one of the homies got shot through the alley there, when I came here, they were crying like they can't take it anymore. Do you worry about your dad? This one was in the yard when the, the shot was firing. She was middle of the yard. That's why I know, you know, all of that, man. They could have got my little daughter that night, man. I saw just came and blazing. They weren't even looking to see her. But little did I know when I came around, my daughter was running around still screaming. You know, I didn't even know she was there, even, you know, if she was dead there, then I didn't even know I ran left my daughter, but that's what I did. Because of incidents like that, Jason, don't you, do you want to get out of it completely? Definitely, man. For me, right, I would like to be in the park. I would like to be walking with my kids, holding hands, you know? You really want to get out, but can you ever, ever get out? I, I hope so, man. You're shaking your head? That. I would hope that. You know? When you were shaking your head, why were you shaking your head? You, you don't think Daddy can get out? Well, because people want to get him. You, do you understand what, what danger your dad is in sometimes? Yeah. Where are you? Creepy that. Does it scare you? You think about it all the time? I always tell them, I tell them, you can't go with me, you're going to get shot up, let your daddy die alone. You know? Let daddy die alone, I don't want, it's going to hurt me more for any of them to die with me. It was amazing seeing Jason with his kids. He clearly loves them dearly and they're the most important thing in his life. That said, he also said that, you know, when shots came into the yard once, he ran away and left his toddler screaming. He also very honestly admitted to picking up one of his daughters and using her as a human shield when he was being shot at. Um, that for me, that's, that's the hard thing about making these programmes. I actually liked him. Against all that I've just said, I actually liked him as a human being. And that's a man that has ordered the deaths of numerous people. So I say that I like him as a human being, but I find what he does absolutely a Pulling. There are many people in Belize who are trying to stop the escalation of gang violence. Douglas Hyde is an ex-gang member who now runs a project on the south side to stop young kids joining the gangs. How dangerous is this for the kids? This is one of the most dangerous era in the city of Belize. Over the period of years, we have seen a lot of gang murders in this era. Anyone who's ever seen a gun before, real gun, not the toy. What you're trying to do is dissuade these kids from joining these gangs, but how strong is the draw for them? How many want to ever touch a gun? For real? Wow. We know the gangs recruit very early. A lot of the crimes that are committed are committed by young kids between the age of 14 and 24. When cocaine and, and crack came into our country, it escalated, it came with weapons, and almost everybody got a weapon. It get even more dangerous because our young people didn't see eye to eye. It was like limited tolerance. Mm. There was like a lot of ignorance. Mm. A lot of people were very impatient. And so it's like, to solve my problem, I take my gun out and shoot you. Trying to tackle the gang problem head on are the police. With the city gripped by gang violence, early morning police raids are a regular occurrence. As you can tell from my face, it's pretty early in the morning here. It's just gone four o'clock. Now we're on our way to a police station to uh, 
to observe and film a raid on a number of gang areas. This morning, there are simultaneous raids planned all over the city. In the upcoming raid, do you see resistance being something very minimal or, or, or a high threat? When going to this area, we need a larger group to contain the area quickly. Officers, you need to be careful because there are dogs in the yard. This house downstairs is where they meet and plan robberies, burglaries, and murders. We just left the police station, the gangs unit, and drug squad are up in front of us. Uh, it's now uh, just about half five. One of the things that we were briefed on before we, uh, we left the station was that a lot of times the local people in the community defend the gang from the police and they'll come out and uh, start hurling stones and sticks and bottles at the police because uh, they see it as an affront to their community that the police could just walk in there and snatch people. struggling to gain entry, and the six dogs protecting the property are not helping. Jump, I'm out. I'm me. Who's this guy? This guy's one of the major players from the um, Victoria Street Bloods. The police carry out a thorough search of the house for guns, drugs and ammunition. They bury them under the, the ground, in the ceilings, in walls, under the floorings. He's very upset, isn't he? Yes, he's upset um, due to the fact that one of his son was shot about over a year ago um, in the neck and it caused him to be paralysed. Is his son there now? Yes, his son who lives in the downstairs of the house. Despite the surprise raid and a thorough search, they fail to find anything incriminating. The police leave, and we ask the family for their side of the story. Mate, they found nothing there, yeah? After a few words, we're invited in to meet the rest of the family. The, the, the father said it's OK to meet the son that, that was shot. He was shot about a year ago. Hi, oh, friend. Sorry about this. Wait, we're basically a documentary crew from, uh, from London. We make uh, films around the world about gangs and about the trouble that exists, about the poverty, and about how people have to live their lives. Can you talk to us about what happened to you? Me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could tell them I leave something, yeah. Nothing wrong with that. I got shot in my neck. In the neck? No, sir. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you get this up, uh, Then I had fell to the ground, and then I That's couldn't... That's not mean. I know Stella. Better kill me. Okay, if you not kill me, I come back for you. We we'll never live peaceful again. Never gonna live peaceful. Because mm. he have a lot of friends and everybody is so hurt about it. You don't like what? It's not like jail. If I roll up on the street and they meet me, they will kill me. Do you go back on the street, they'll kill you. I want to go to the river, go fishing, like why you drill it all? If I go to the river, go fishing, somebody will come right up to me and shot me on my head. Just tell me how old you are now. Me, yeah, I'm 20, 23. And what, is, what, what are you going to do now? What's the future for you now? Future, well, if you tell her to shoot, right? I don't really got nothing for though. It's a bad cat. Yeah. Sometimes this pain with this game makes me feel like I'm not dead. Yeah. I have to live with that. Is that always going to be? You're always going to have a capital like that? Well, I could take it out. You, I could use the bathroom, but I can't get up for the bathroom. And they still want to kill you? Yeah, they still want to kill me. They want to try anything for they... Yeah. What would change that situation? I don't know. The police can't do it. Well, you have to remove the people who are trying to kill you so in order for you to do that. Exactly. Um, I want to do that. 
I want to do it. I want to move in. So all the guys that believe, you hurt me, I catch your whole family. Your ma, your pa, your dog, everything was dead. But me and I did it like that, man. The guy who shot me, I meet his sister one. I come and cut off his head if I'm one. You know, innocent people, you know, hurt people when I do nothing. Because if I want, right? If I really, really want, I could go and buy some plastic explosive and I could set it and blow up the whole block. No? You, you want to see the sword? Yeah, yeah. Right. You sure show us the sequel? Come in, come in. Come on. As the brothers lead me inside, I am totally unprepared for what I'm about to see. One, two, three, yeah, here. One, two, three, yeah. Okay, man. Sure, man. There you go. That's the sauce there. That's what rotted on you, yeah? Yeah. Ah, another one about. Turn one. Oh, no, man. I still try to get better. Yeah, I'm not in the Belize. I have to go outside for treatment, you know? When you were in hospital, they should have kept turning your body. Yeah, I, I always need help, you know? I got no help. This is my word right here. I cried for two years. Cried for two years, yeah? Yeah. No. I can't even feel pain. Can't cry no more. The fact that some people still want this young man killed and that he is so intent on taking revenge is proof of the unending cycle of violence and retribution that exists in Belize City. How you go about breaking this pattern is hard for me to say. And is so often the case when making these programs, I leave with more questions than answers. The one thing that's not in doubt, however, is the fact that hundreds of tons of cocaine moved through this very small country and the payment for its safe transportation in guns and drugs has made Belize City one of the most dangerous gang-ridden cities on the planet. However, there is a new government here. And the people we've spoken to seem to believe it offers genuine hope. But with such a global demand for cocaine, unless there is some serious investment in the people and the infrastructure here. The traffickers will only get rich quicker and the street gangsters will only die trying. <laughs>